bleak house what is the meaning of bleak hopeless depressing is it just a house or is it the entire city we will come to know in today's capsule summary hello how are you this is heena from today team walad today's novel of discussion is bleak house published serially like charles dickens novels usually they were published serially you know in episode form so published serially from 1852 to 1853 bleak house was published in a book form in 1853 author the greatest victorian novelist Charles Dickens lived from 1812 to 1870 literary period of course is victorian era and the genre of bleak house is that it is a social novel it talks about the contemporary england of that time the problems of that time for example child labor prison system social class and also the terrible living conditions of the poor who left their houses came to the cities to work in the factories or industries so their terrible living conditions in the slums of london okay narrator in bleak house two narrators first person as well as third person setting is london and kent in the late 1820s and in a crux bleak house explores the life of a female protagonist whose name is esther summerson esther summerson who is poverty ridden in early life unaware of her real parentage but discovers her true parentage at the novel's end along with love so esther at the end of the novel will discover who her real parents are and she will also get true love before starting the novel you should know jarndice and jarndice in bleak house again and again i will take this term jarndice and jarndice jarndice and jarndice don't worry this is just the name of a court case easy so what is jarndice and jarndice the fictional lawsuit of jarndice and jarndice in bleak house is based on a real chancery lawsuit known as thelison and woodford which remained unsolved in the court for over 60 years and you know how dickens was he connected everything which was contemporary or prevalent during that time with his novels he connected okay so this original or this real court case which was going on for generations generations people of the family were dying the court case was getting inherited from one person to the other in the family but the case was not solving okay and in which court these cases were coming the court is called as court of chancery so i will take the name court of chancery or chancery court and the fictional name of this lawsuit or court case is jarndice and jarndice easy now we are at a better position to begin with the novel summary let's start Esther Summerson is a loving child, noble and selfless in her character. She lives with her godmother Miss Barbary who treats her with cruelty. So once it is Esther's birthday and she pleads Miss Barbary to tell her something about her mother. You know on which Miss Barbary shouts and says, "Your mother is your disgrace and you were hers." Esther cannot understand why she is treated like that so she always longs for acceptance and friendship luckily miss barbary actually dies after a few years and esther moves to the guardianship of a man called as mr jarndice okay but before entering mr jarndice's house esther has to receive education for that person mr jarndice said for that purpose for that purpose of education of esther jarndice sends a person whose name is mr kenge or conservative kenge who is a lawyer friend of mr jarndice so this kenge has come to take who esther along with him you know to educate her mr kenge first of all reveals or tells something to esther which shocks her He tells her that Miss Barbary was not your godmother only; she was your aunt by blood. So now Esther does not know how to say anything, but anyway, she chugs along. Six years are done. Esther is educated; she is happy, confident, but she remains humble. And now she is ready to become a governess at Mister John Dice's house. So it is not that Mister John Dice only. gave financial support for esther's education after her education she can now become a governess okay or a helper in mr jarndice's house 
Okay, but before entering Mr. John Dice's house, let's enter Mrs. Jellybee's house. Before reaching Mr. John Dice's house in London, Esther stays overnight with the Jellybee family, which consists of Mrs. Jellybee, Mr. Jellybee, their children named Caddy, Peep Pee, etc. Esther, when enters Jellybee's house, is amazed to look at the mess in the house, the chaotic state of this house. Mrs. Jellyby, she's a fanatic philanthropist. She only wants to help people give charity because of which his husband is heavily in debt. Also, Miss, her husband, sorry, her husband is heavily in debt. Also, Mrs. Jellyby is obsessed with a colonial project in Africa related to coffee trade. So much that Mrs. Jellyby neglects her family. Her children are dirty and uneducated. Here, the theme is, it's, a, it's an original theme of Victorian era, philanthropy of 19th century middle-class England. You know, doing philanthropy during that time was fashionable, essential. People were philanthropists. It was like their profession, their passion. They wanted to help people. And if you enter their houses, their houses were in mess, utter mess. So here, you know, Charles Dickens makes clear that charity should begin at home. Take care of your home first, then move outside. <laughs> and also, Britain's colonial efforts abroad are a waste of citizens' taxes. This is what Charles Dickens meant by showing Jellyby character here. Easy. Next day, the setting changes to Bleak House. Yes, the name of Mr. Jarndyce House in London is called as Bleak House. Esther reaches Mr. John Dice's house the next morning. She meets Mr. John Dice and instantly gets a liking for this old man. He is charitable. He sympathizes with the poor. Here the theme is charity. Now, do you connect Mr. John Dice with the case John Dice and John Dice? You should. Mr. John Dice is involved in the lawsuit John Dice and John Dice, which he has inherited from his late uncle Tom John Dice. Basically, uncle Tom John Dice was connected to this case. Okay, this is a case related to property, property dispute. Many people say, This is my property, this is my property. This is what John Dice and John Dice cases are all about. So, one such person is uncle John Dice, uncle Tom. But the case does not get resolved, does not get resolved so much that Uncle Tom gets mad. He pays so much as fees, you know, to the lawyers, to the court, but nothing comes out of it. Uncle Tom is mad and he committed suicide. He literally shot himself because of the delay in the resolution of this case. Now, because he is dead, Jandice and Jandice case now will come into the hand of another relative who is this person, Mr. Jandice. But Mr. Jandice is a practical man. He understands the complexities of lawsuits and therefore he remains detached from this long pending lawsuit. In fact, he even advises his young cousin who stays with him, whose name is Richard Carstone, to not involve in this case at all. Okay. Abhi, I'll tell you who is Richard Carstone. Don't worry. Just till now, remember that Esther Summerstone has come into Mr. Jarndyce's house to work as a governess here. Mr. Jarndyce is involved in this court case, which might give him a lot of money, but it will not happen. Okay. Now, at Mr. Jarndyce's house, Esther becomes friends with Ada Clare and Richard Carstone. Who are they? Ada Clare and Richard Carstone are wards of the court in this lawsuit, John Dice and John Dice. They are basically taken in by Mr. John Dice because they are orphans. They are under the age of 21. They are related to late Uncle Tom John Dice. So after Uncle Tom dies, the court the court orders Mr. John Dice to take care of Ada and Richard, you know, until they become adults. So these people are called as wards of the court, wards of the court. Easy. Mr. John Dice takes care of these three children, providing them a house and education. But you should know here, Ada Claire and Richard Carstone, they are cousins. They are cousins. They are also related to Mr. John Dice. Okay. The three children, that is, Esther, Ada, Richard live together and they become like a family. They become very close and great, great friends. Here the theme is friendship. Okay. Now, 
again another minor character there are so many characters in bleak house i have not been able to name all of them but don't worry in the end i have given the entire list of how many characters are there the important ones i'm naming so mr john dice has a friend named mr skimpole who is a frequent visitor at his house esther who actually judges people she's innocent but she's not naive you should know the difference she's not foolish she can easily understand what a person is like so esther finds mr skimpole to be very childish and irresponsible the truth actually is mr skimpole although he shows that he's very rich he's always under debt he asks for charity he lives on charity from his you know rich friends like mr john dice he in fact takes bribes also this is the character of mr skimpole okay now one day these children they visit the court of chancery okay the court i told you where this lawsuit is going on john dice and john dice and in this court of chancery which deals exclusively with disputes over property in this chancery court they meet people like miss flight gridley these people miss flight gridley they visit the court every day their cases are going on 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 for years 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 with no resolution miss flight though has become mad i'm telling you she comes to the court every day she thinks she's a very important person okay and she invites these children home where does she live she lodges on rent okay in crook's shop crook is an important character so miss flight lives above a rag and bone shop owned by crook miss flight has many caged birds in her room and the children are so scared looking at so many birds in her room but you know miss flight says that these birds represent the hope and beauty of the chancery's victims i am a chancery victim i am sure that i will get you know justice in my case from the court of chancery and then miss flight says that she would release these birds on the judgment day what is judgment day when her judgment in the court of chancery will be done let me tell you it will never be done here the theme is law versus justice don't you think this can easily be connected to actually country like india also where many cases keep on going for years for years for years yes do you find a connection yes now let's move on to another setting in london called as chesney wold kindly open your ears nicely <laughs> okay just be attentive that is what i'm saying lady deadlock or honoria lives with her husband sir lester deadlock in a fashionable london estate called chesney wold sir lester deadlock is a rich man of noble lineage he's like that old rich of england during that time he's not the new rich he's old rich by family by heredity by noble position family history So Sir Lester Dedlock is a proud man he's proud of his social position and his family history nonetheless he loves his wife whose name is Honoria or Lady Dedlock who is not from a noble background Lady Dedlock is a proud and a haughty woman who is bored with everything and everybody there's a line in the novel where Lady Dedlock says i am bored to death okay her husband loves her affectionately she actually returns his affection she is a good wife but lady deadlock has a dark secret looming over her what is this dark secret everybody has a secret right so what is lady deadlock's secret you should know before marriage lady deadlock was in love with a man called captain hodon with whom she had conceived a baby okay out of wedlock without marriage so she had a, an affair with captain hodon she conceived a baby whom she presumed died at childbirth this secret is buried deep down you know inside her although lady deadlock does feel guilty of conceiving out of wedlock then after this the narrator describes a ghost you know lady deadlock feels that there is a ghost around chesney wold this house of theirs here the theme is gothic okay whose ghost is it now there's let's start now with the main story in the novel the deadlocks are sitting with their lawyer or solicitor whose name is mr tulking horn or mr tucking horn who reads an affidavit related to a court case lady deadlock quickly you know just looks over the affidavit and finds this handwriting very 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 familiar so familiar that she starts fainting 
Mr. Tucking Horn, their lawyer, is a very cunning man. He understands that there is something suspicious related to Lady Don Deadlock. Why did, you know, she act so, so weird looking at this handwriting? Whose handwriting is it on this court document? So Mr. Tuckinghorn in the novel is associated with a rat and a crow. That is, he's very unpleasant, very sinister. He is the villain of the novel. Remember this, Mr. Tuckinghorn. He does not like Lady Deadlock. Why? Because Mr. Tuckinghorn thinks that Sir Lester is high in position. Lady Deadlock is a social climber. You know, she has married for money. She's not from a noble background. So now Mr. Tuckinghorn says or thinks that I am going to dig into the past of this woman. Why did she get so scared looking at this handwriting on the, you know, court paper? So as he investigates the lanes around the court of chancery, Mr. Tuckinghorn finds out that this document was written by a very poor law writer whose name is Nemo, who works for Mr. Snagsby, a stationer near the Chancery Court. Nemo, just like Miss Flight, lived in Crookshop. Remember Crookshop? And Nemo was a heavy opium addict. Although Nemo was poor, he often gave money to Joe. Joe is an orphan homeless boy who sweeps the streets around the Chancery Court. And here Dickens actually wants to talk about the terrible conditions of orphans in London at that time. Joe was an orphan. He lived on the streets for as long as he remembered. He would clean, just, you know, wait for the alms given to him. He was like a beggar, okay? And this was the terrible condition of orphans. So the neighbors, they found Nemo, this person, this law writer, very mysterious and he was rumored to have sold his soul to the devil. Now, when Mr. Tuckinghorn means J meets Joe, he never meets Nemo. Mr. Tuckinghorn meets Joe, and Joe told him that Nemo is dead, and Nemo in Latin means nobody, okay? Around the same time, Lady Deadlock is very, very concerned about the handwriting. She also moves around the, you know, lanes of the court, she wants to know, you know, where is this person who has written this handwriting? So she also approaches Joe. She's not this guy. You know, she's not herself. She's right now disguised as her maid, Mademoiselle Hortense. She's basically wearing a black color veil. She has covered her face and she comes, she approaches Joe and she looks scary. And she tells Joe, take me to Nemo's burial site. Okay, Nemo is dead. So she says, take me to Nemo's burial site. Joe is scared looking at this lady and he takes her to Nemo's grave. Okay, let's stop here for some time. Let's again move to Mr. Jandice's house. Let's move to Esther, Ada, Richard, Mr. Jandice. Let's go to Bleak House. Ada grows up to be very optimistic and eventually falls in love with her cousin Richard. Richard grows up to be careless with money. He fails in all the professions Mr. Jandice helps him set up. You know, actually, Richard tries his hands at medicine, at law, at army, military, but he fails everywhere. And here, when Richard was preparing to be a doctor, Esther meets another doctor named Alan Woodcourt at the house of Richard's tutor. It is here that Alan and Mr. Woodcourt, they love each other. They kind of, you know, start getting a liking for each other. Alan instantly likes Esther's kind and gentle nature. Alan, you know, this uh, Esther... Sorry, Alan likes Esther's kind nature and Esther is shown in this novel to be like that motherly figure, to be that homely domestic person, okay, which was very important for a Victorian woman of that time. So Esther acts like a perfect homemaker and the, here the theme is Victorian women, okay. So Mr. Woodcourt, as I told you, he's a doctor, he's a young surgeon who has dedicated his life to serve the poor rather than the rich. He's a very humble doctor. And Richard, because he has failed at all the professions, he has no money, he does not know what to do. He now thinks about the case, Jandice and Jandice, which will get him a lot of money if it gets solved. So now Richard turns all his attentions and energy to this lucrative lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Jandice again warns him that be away from the family curse. This case, this Jandice and Jandice is our family curse. 
people kill themselves because of this case they feel they will get money but nothing will come out of it please don't waste your time but richard will not listen to his uncle okay now after a few months miss this is again a minor plot mr john dice and mrs pardigal who is a philanthropist they take esther and ada to meet a poor family which consists of jenny liz and their brickmaker husbands okay he after this esther and ada are taken for a holiday to mr john dice's friend mr boy thorn mr boy thorn was the person who loved esther's aunt miss barberry but they could not marry okay and mr boy thorn lives next door to chesney wold the deadly estate and it is around here that esther summerstone and lady deadlock will meet you will say what is the connection between esther and lady deadlock i will tell you esther when finds lady deadlock who is very haughty lady deadlock does not like esther esther instantly finds that she looks similar to lady deadlock esther looks at herself then looks at lady deadlock she thinks of herself then lady deadlock she says why do we look so similar now after this there's something unfortunate that is going to happen joe was around here remember that you know orphan child on the street who would get money from nemo joe had smallpox from this joe the smallpox infection has come to esther esther becomes severely ill although she survives her beauty diminishes she was very beautiful but after catching smallpox esther face becomes completely scarred she has these spots 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 on her face and when she is ill she is frequently visited by lady deadlock again disguised okay lady deadlock does not come as lady deadlock she comes as disguised you know she went to joe also disguised same way she visits you know this uh, esther disguised now after this the meeting between the daughter and mother yes you should know this esther and lady deadlock are daughter and mother lady deadlock confesses to esther that she is indeed her mother but she did not know it okay before she met esther although lady deadlock thought that her child died at birth but the truth is Esther was taken away to be raised in private by Lady Deadlock's sister Miss Barbary. So Miss Barbary and Lady Deadlock they are sisters. Miss Barbary is dead. So basically Esther was taken care of or raised by her masi. Understood? Esther is shocked. She's got her mother in the woods. She's happy. but just at the second moment she gets very disappointed because lady deadlock tells her not to reveal this secret out in the public because lady deadlock belongs to a very wealthy background now okay this will degrade her reputation that she had a child before marriage esther agrees returns to bleak house although she confesses everything to mr john dice and it is at this moment that mr john dice the old man you know uh, confesses his love he has fallen in love with esther and he tells esther will you marry me esther who loves mr woodcourt but mr woodcourt the doctor is away from scene right now he's traveling esther thoughts you know thinks about it thoughtfully she agrees now meanwhile a clever lawyer named mr holes uh, encourages richard's false hopes that jandice and jandice court case will make him very rich one day so richard turns against his uncle mr jandice becomes his enemy and here the theme is greed esther again feels that this mr holes is like a vampire he will suck the life out of richard which he eventually does richard will die soon richard will be mentally so unstable because of this court case it will not bring him money in fact he will lose all the money he has in this court case holes also means a rodent okay after this richard and ada they marry in secret and meanwhile mr tuckinghorn the lawyer of the you know of these people the lawyer of deadlock family he you know has come to know the secret of lady deadlock he's trying to blackmail lady deadlock because he has found the evidence that she is esther's mother and where is this evidence found in crook shop remember crook shop where miss flight lives where nemo also lived they rented so the people who helped mr tuckinghorn reveal this secret about lady deadlock are listen to the names of these people there is george george basically is an ex soldier who worked with mr captain hodorn or nemo 
Mr. Bucket is a policeman. He also helped this lawyer. Joe, the orphan sweeper, of course, helped. Crook. Crook is an old drunk shopkeeper whose rag and bone shop is in the back street of the Court of Chancery. Crook has heaps of important documents kept at his shop. Although Crook is illiterate, he cannot read these documents, but he feels very powerful keeping them. And in these documents are the old letters which reveal that Lady Detlock is Esther's mother or Lady Dedlock had an affair with Captain Hodon, who went on with the name Nemo. Okay, here just uh, nothing very important, but people call Crook as Lord Chancellor because of his proximity to the court and also because of so many important documents that are kept at his store. And you know, Crook, who is a gin addict, he would drink so much gin that in the novel he dies because of internal burning. Like his body gets so hot, he combusts himself. And then his shop goes or is inherited by the greedy Smallweed family because Mrs. Smallweed is the sister of Crook. So Smallweed family is also introduced in Bleak House. They are basically money lenders. And George took money from Smallweed. These are little, little characters. I'm telling you, Charles Dickens has put in so many characters in this novel. Even now, I haven't told you 50%. There are so many characters in this novel. Smallweed family, Roundswell family, Charlie, some the people, so many people, okay? But we are doing very important things. Like, this is enough. Now, with this, let's understand Captain Hodon's secret or Nemo's secret. Captain Hodon was once an officer in the army. George reported to him. George now runs a shooting gallery near the court. Mr. Tuckinghorn, Lady Dedlock's lawyer, blackmails George into providing a sample of Captain Hodon's handwriting in an effort to discover Lady Dedlock's secret. So according to George, Captain Hodon went into huge debt and became suicidal over his failure. Eventually, Captain Hodon or Nemo, he died of opium overdose before even learning about his daughter, Esther. He is buried in a pauper's grave in a slum called Tom All Alone's, where Joe lives. So this question once in fact came, you know, where Joe lives, the name of this alley, Tom All Alone, slum. And this is where Nemo's body is buried, Tom All Alone's, okay? Mademoiselle Hortense, do you remember her? She is the maid of Miss Lady, you know, Deadlock. So Mademoiselle Hortense, Lady Deadlock's maid, is a French woman who is extremely jealous of her employer. She hates Lady Deadlock. So there is a time in the novel when Lady Deadlock fires Mademoiselle Hortense from her job and instead of her place brings in Rosa, another maid. Hortense gets so mad that she goes to the lengths to kill Mr. Tuckinghorn. Yes, the lawyer is killed. This lawyer who was trying to blackmail Lady Deadlock is killed. And everyone thinks that either Lady Deadlock has committed this crime or George has committed this crime. Okay, we don't know. But who has done it? Mademoiselle Hortense. She frames Lady Deadlock for his murder. But at the end, Mademoiselle Hortense confesses to the policeman, whose name is Mr. Bucket, that she killed Mr. Tuckinghorn in her mad hatred for Lady Deadlock. But after this, you should know it, Lady Deadlock's secret comes out in public that she had an affair, not just an affair, she had a baby out of wedlock whose name is Esther, who is very much alive, who is a governess in Mr. John Dice's house. And she is publicly disgraced. And because of this, she runs away from her husband, Lord Chester. You know, this... Uh, Lester and Lester, Sir Lester, who loves his wife dearly. He discovers this truth about his wife. He is disappointed at first, but he quickly forgives her and he requests, you know, her to return, but she has run away. He requests the policeman to help him, you know, find her. Here the theme is love. But as destined, you should know it, at the end of the novel, Lady Deadlock also dies. And where does she die? You should know it. Near the grave of her lover, Captain Hodon. She goes to visit the grave. It is very cold. She dies of exposure. Okay. And both the lovers, they are like side by side. Sir Lester loses the meaning of his life. And with this, we are coming towards the end of Bleak House. How does Bleak House end? Richard dies of TB. Anna and Richard were married, remember? Anna gives birth to their son, who is also named Richard. 
Mr. Jandice takes care of this baby Richard and Anna. Ada, sorry, Ada, not Anna, Ada, Claire, Ada. Jandice and Jandice case is closed forever without, without any verdict. No party receives any money. So much money has already been given to fight the case. No money comes to anybody. The court case is closed down. Mr. Woodcourt, the doctor, remember, who loved, loved Esther, he returns from the voyage and surprisingly, he finds that Esther's face is completely scarred due to smallpox, but his love for her does not change. And it is at this time that Mr. John Dice acts gracefully. He loves Esther, but he steps aside and he lets the two lovers marry. That is Esther and Woodcourt. They marry, they move to Yorkshire where Woodcourt works at a hospital for the poor. They live modestly in a house gifted to them by Mr. John Dice and they have children. And at the end of Bleak House, Esther feels thankful. She is happy for all the love and blessing in her life. With this, we are done with Bleak House. These are points to ponder. Today, the novel summary has gone way too long. Kindly read it when you are free. And also, I have given the names of more characters. Guppy is an important character. Uh, Charlie is a character. Rounswell family is a character. Rounswell family actually takes care of Sir Lester, you know, when he's not well, when um, his wife runs away, right? And there are many more. <laughs> Bleak House is done by Charles Dickens. I hope you enjoyed the novel. If you did, what will you do? Drop down a comment. This is Hina from Team Wallet. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.